brief remarks. I now invite Dr. The Right Excellency and Right Honorable Sir Kennedy Simmons, KCMG, who served as Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis during the period, the 19th day of September 1983 to the 7th day of July 1995. Sir Kennedy. Good morning, everyone. Mr. President, I crave your indulgence to adopt the protocol which you have established, save only to recognize, in addition to you, sir, the Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, the Deputy, the Deputy Governor General for Nevis, Her Honor, Mrs. Ailita Liburd and Mr. Liburd, the Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, and Mrs. Brantley, members of Cabinet, of the Federal Cabinet, of the Nevis Cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you, Mr. President, for your gracious invitation to be a part of this historic occasion. I was immediately struck by the raison d'etre for this occasion as expressed in your letter of invitation, and I quote, this disaster has great historical value as it significantly impacted the economic, social, and psychological stability of St. Christopher and Nevis." End of quote. In making my brief contribution towards the history of this event, 50 years removed, I am conscious that even in this chamber today, we may have persons who were not even born when the disaster occurred. In my autobiography titled The Making of a National Hero, I devoted a chapter to the Christina disaster, mainly in relation to my own involvement. On that fateful Saturday, it transpired that I was the only doctor on Nevis. For some considerable time prior to the day of the disaster, there was only one doctor on Nevis, in the person of Dr. Barbara Lyle, one of my classmates from UCWI. She was also known as Mrs. Cedric Harper. She was a surgeon and medical superintendent at the Alexandria Hospital and district doctor for Charleston. <clears throat> Even though I was at the time persona non grata with the government of the day, perhaps it was only the minister, I was asked by the permanent secretary of health, Mr. Anthony Ribeiro, if I would be willing to help by doing a weekly clinic at Gingerland. I agreed, not only because Gingerland is my ancestral home, as many of you in Nevis would know. And so usually I would fly over in the morning and fly back to St. Kitts in the afternoon. On that Saturday of the August weekend, I was required to go to Gingerland as usual and when I arrived at the airport, I met Dr. Lyle. We spoke, and she told me that her contract was ended and she was returning to Jamaica. I inquired about her successor to be told that she had not been told whether a successor had been appointed. 
I was, therefore, for that day at least, the only doctor on Nevis. Coincidentally, it being the holiday weekend, I had decided to remain in Nevis to participate in whatever action was available. I had a reservation at the Montpellier Hotel, but I was in no hurry to check in. When I did decide to go to the hotel to check in and have lunch, as I drove into the yard, the manager ran out into the yard shouting, don't get out, don't get out. They just called to say that you must come to Charlestown quick because the Christina gone down and they're bringing in survivors. So I just turned around and headed for Charlestown. I eventually set up a base of operations at the hospital and invited the, requested in fact, the police to send word around on the western, particularly on the western side of the island at all possibly points of entry to advise persons who were bringing in survivors to bring everybody to, to the hospital because some people were going down to um, the, the pier at Charlestown. I set up a triage system, though that name was not used in those days. 65 survivors were brought to the hospital that day. I examined, documented, and treated 63 of them. When the government team of Dr. Sebastian and Dr. Kelsick arrived that night, they treated the other two survivors. It has to be noted that there were no lights on Newcastle Airport at that time. So a call was sent out for persons with vehicles to go to the airport onto the runway and turn on the headlamps on their cars so that the government medical team could land. Life sometimes presents us with unimaginable ironies. Ten years later, on Christmas Eve 1980, the Premier, the Honorable Simeon Daniel, now national hero, invited me to turn on the permanent runway lights on the Newcastle Airport. Now the Vance Amory International Airport. After the disaster of Christina, the tensions and the distrust between St. Kitts and Nevis was further aggravated during the tenure of its successor ferry, the La Amiga, with its intimidating presence of armed soldiers. But eventually, that too was changed. The change came when in the wee hours of February 19, 1980, two men, with their support teams, sat across from each other and looked into each other's eyes and believed that the respect and good faith they saw there was genuine. Together, they moved St. Kitts and Nevis away from the brink of another disaster and laid the foundation for the unity, trust, and confidence that is manifest in our people today. Now, 50 years later, the sequel to the Christina disaster cannot end with the La Amiga. Once that historic partnership was cemented, the need to provide safer travel options between Charlestown and Bastyr became a high priority. It therefore fell to me to close the chapter on the horror story 
that the transportation between St. Kitts and Nevis had become. I did not delegate that responsibility. I went myself with a team of experts, which included the vastly experienced division, Sea Captain Earl Francis, the late Earl Francis, and the late Mr. Roy Sprove of the Virgin, I of the Virgin Islands, a highly qualified and experienced marine engineer. Together, we agreed that the Carib Queen met our requirements. We purchased the boat, and with a skeleton crew, the captain and engineer sailed the Carib Queen from New Orleans to St. Kitts, then across to Nevis, arriving on the 10th of December, 1980. That vessel served the people of our Federation safely and efficiently for nigh on 40 years and made a significant contribution to the economic and social stability of St. Kitts and Nevis. However, the progress we have made 50 years after the Christina disaster should not be taken for granted, nor viewed in isolation from the historic partnership of 40 years ago. Today, the continuing evolution in the economic and social stability of St. Kitts and Nevis is being facilitated and fueled by a revolution in small business enterprise. Today, the vital lifeline of transportation of people, goods, and services across the channel is more efficient, convenient, and timely than it has ever been. Our people, our entrepreneurs, have seized the initiative and have shouldered the responsibility for this significant area of our economy and lifestyle. Five decades after, St. Kitts and Nevis is more prosperous and progressive. Our achievements in education, health, tourism, sports, technology, and our protection and support for vulnerable groups are admirable, even in the eyes of more developed nations. More importantly, however, we have not experienced another major boating accident since 1970. To those of you who mourn loved ones lost, we stand with you. We honor their memory with prayer and reverence. We assure you in words and deeds that lessons have been learned and applied for the benefit of future generations, including your own offspring. All thanks and praise we give to God who has strengthened us, sustained us, and brought us safely to this day. May it please you, Mr. President. I now invite our next dignitary